What's good YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So a few days ago, I was driving the E30 home and I noticed that the check engine light came on and at first I was, wasn't too worried about it because I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and check the code, get that fixed and it shouldn't be too big of a problem. But then I did some more research and I found out that you can't actually check the engine codes on this car like you normally would. So after doing some research online, browsing through the internet, finding out how to check the engine codes, I finally came across this great little article that explains everything that you need to do to check the engine codes for this car. And it's right here. I came across this article by Race German. I'll make sure to put the link in the description down below. But it gives you step by steps on how to read the codes and even the, a list of codes here that you can reference if these are some of the codes that pop up. So I haven't seen too many videos on this topic so I thought why not go ahead and make this quick demonstrative video on how to check those engine lights. Shouldn't take too long, honestly. I am a little scared to be honest. I hope it's not a big issue or something big that we need to fix and it's just something small like a misfire or something like that. But I am a little scared. So let's get into it. Let's see what the codes say or if we can decipher what the code is. And um, I'll decide the next video what's gonna happen after this. So if you did wanna check if your ECU is a correct one to do a stomp test, you're just gonna open up the glove box and it should be sitting right above the glove box right in this general area. From there, you just wanna check if your ECU is a 173 and above. Most light E30s are. So just go ahead and check. And if you don't have a 173, I would just go ahead and source a 173 ECU and above, get rid of your 153, and it should just plug and play. From there, you'll have an upgraded ECU and you won't have the issues that the 153 usually would have. I'm sure it'd be pretty simple and easy and cost effective for you to do. And since it's plug and play, you don't have to be worried about wiring and stuff like that. So you just literally pull the other one out, put the new one back in, and then go ahead and do a stomp test. So first step, you're gonna go ahead and turn the car to ignition on, but you're not gonna start the car. From there, uh, and I'm not gonna get into it just yet, but you're gonna do five quick pedal depresses. So you're gonna go all the way to the ground and then do that five times within 10 seconds, I believe. So it is a little bit tricky to get the timing down. It doesn't work all the time. Once you correctly in the right timing hit the pedal five times within 10 seconds, you should notice that your check engine light should pop up. From there, it's gonna start flashing in different sequences. So before we get into it, uh, I'll just go ahead and explain what those mean. Once the initial check engine light flashes on, from there, it's gonna have a series of multiple flashes or single flashes with a pause after it. If it flashes once and then pause, that tells you it's a one. If it flashes three times, then pauses, then that's a three. The engine code should be four digits long. It's gonna be a long pause, then it'll get into the next engine code, and you just gotta jot it down. So I'm gonna keep my phone handy with me, write everything down so I don't miss it, then refer back to that little article that I mentioned before and see what those engine codes mean. Now, you guys have a quick overview of what's gonna happen. Let's go ahead and get into the actual stomp test. So, I'm gonna turn the ignition on and right after that, full depress and then one, two, three, four, five. See, it didn't work that time, so I'm gonna try it again. Okay. So second try, on, fully depress. Got it. So that was one, one, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I wasn't paying attention and I just completely missed the beeps. So I'm gonna turn the car off, retry it without the camera, jot down the engine codes that I have, and then I'll pick you guys back up. Okay, so I got my pen and paper this time, that way I don't miss anything, and I'll actually focus on the blinks this time. But yeah, let me try this again. Hopefully I get it this time and I don't miss anything. And like I said, I'm thinking I have two check engine codes coming up, so it's gonna be a series of four sequences, then another four sequences, and those sequences could have any amount of flashes between one and six, I think. Um, so let me try it again, go ahead. Okay, so the code as of right now I have is 1444, 1444, no failures. I'm confusion. One flash, pause, so that's one. One, two, three, four, that's, that's four. 
one, two, three, four. That's another four. One, two, three, four. And long pause. And now that's the long blink just means that it's gonna give you the next engine code or that's the end of the sequence. But now if we go ahead and take a look at the engine codes through Ray's German's article and you go all the way to the bottom, it says 1444, no failures. So I think I'm good. Cause that's the only engine code that it's giving me unless I'm missing it. But I was staring at it for quite a while off camera just to make sure not to look stupid or anything. So at first I was a little bit scared because I was like, okay, what if I have the wrong ECU? What if I have too many engine codes? How would I decipher them and all that kind of stuff? But then I came across this great article and it helped me out a bunch. It gives you step by step. So even if I missed a few little tiny steps here and there, and you're a little bit confused on how to do it, just go ahead and read that article and you should be good to go. So quickly, just a recap, I'll just go ahead and do it again for you guys. But turn the ignition to on and you're gonna stomp your foot one, two, three, four, five. And you should notice that blink. So it just gave me that blink that is ready to go. And it's gonna give you one, pause. Four, pause. Another four, pause. And pause again if you had another engine code it would run that sequence right after that one but since I don't have any more I'm good to go I believe so luckily for me no failures on my end I think I just need a new brake light and a new engine oil uh, change or needs more engine oil but I'll go ahead and adjust those so that way my check engine light in the middle stops flashing if you do know why that constantly flashes for me Please let me know down in the comments because this is my first E30, so I'm still learning quite a few things about it, doing research on it here and there. If you have any idea why it's doing that, let me know. Um, I'm, my guess is that it's because of the, the brake light and the engine oil. I'm actually super relieved that I don't have any engine codes, so that means I don't have anything to fix right now. I just need to figure out why that check engine light keeps flashing. It's not even the check engine light, it's just a check light. It just keeps flashing. So that's it for this video, I think. I honestly just wanted to show you guys how to do that because I was a little bit confused when I found out that this car didn't have an OBD port reader or you couldn't read the codes like you normally would. If you're like me, you like seeing how things are done versus reading about how it's done. So I thought, you know what, why not help you guys make a clear, concise video on how to check the engine codes on our E30. And now you can do it yourself and hopefully you don't have any engine codes like me. I'm actually about to jump into next week's video. It is late, I'm recording this super late, I've been super busy. For next week's video, we're gonna be looking at the engine bay again for the E30. And we're gonna be going, going ahead, removing the intake, removing the valve cover, and getting those powder coated. So right now, the car does look very hideous from the engine bay, but hopefully next time you guys see this, you guys will see me pulling everything off getting it powder coated and reinstalling it. And then I basically want to start revamping the entire engine bay. From there, this thing looks, this air box just looks absolutely disgusting. I want to go ahead, pull that out, restore it back to its original factory look, put it back in the car. Uh, there's this bracket right here that needs fixing. That thing is getting rusted out, looking hideous. And I also want to figure out what to do with this ugly, windshield washer reservoir right here. I hate the way this thing looks. It's no longer clear, it's like this yellow and then it's blue, so this and that. I just wanna find a tank, like a metal tank. I think Chase Bays has one where I can get rid of this one and then get a, like a metal black cylindrical tank. Uh, that gets rid of this one, but that's for next week's video. But overall, I just want to clean up the engine bay Just make it look a lot nicer get it up to date in terms of looks So definitely stay tuned for that if this video was helpful at all drop a like down below on the video It just helps put the video out there for more people to see and then comment what engine codes came out of your car for me Luckily, I got no failures and hopefully that's the case for you as well But thank you all for watching stay tuned subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace